Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I want to talk to you about the effect of stress on your mind. Um, basically, everything is harder when there's more tension. Everything is easier when there's less tension. And that includes what's going on in your mind. Okay? The first thing that happens in stress is that we become more action-oriented. Stress gears our body up to, to take care of things, to, to run away or to fight or to deal with something. And so our ability to take in information goes down at that time. Our ability to be receptive, to listen, to learn, all of that goes down. So uh, anyone who's trying to study and works harder at it actually is going to have a difficult time because the ability to learn, the ability to receive information is, is diminished to the extent that the tension is building up. So pushing yourself and forcing yourself kind of works against that. I want to explain uh, exactly how that works because we've really learned a lot in terms of brain structure and what's going on in the brain over the past uh, years or so and we have a pretty good understanding of what's really going on here. There are a couple of things that, that uh, make it difficult on your mind during stress. The first is your focus goes, becomes more narrow. Okay? Now that's actually an adaptive response to a threat. Uh, it's something that could save your life uh, if you were in the wild potentially. Uh, I was uh, walking across our, in front of our living room windows the other day and there was a deer in the front yard and she saw me walking across and just froze and stared at me. And uh, then I made a little movement and she froze even more and just was really intently watching me. And my dog came trotting alongside of the house and he actually got closer to a deer than he ever had in his life because she was so narrowly focused. Okay? That's the same thing we do under tension. Okay? And it doesn't matter whether the tension came from an actual threat or whether it came from becoming too tired or pushing ourselves or trying to multitask uh, or worrying. Uh, it all has the same effect on your mind. It narrows the focus. Okay? The other thing that happens to our mind under stress is it leads us to ask the question, what's wrong? Okay, if I'm sitting here just relaxed and all of a sudden I feel myself tensing up, the first thought I'm going to have is, what's wrong? Okay, and I'm going to look around and check and see what's going on and so I don't see any particular threat. Let's say I check the door. Whoops, the door's hot. I go out the window. That could save our lives. Okay, so it's an adaptive response that tends to work against us in modern culture and everyday life. Okay, so here's what happens. The tension builds. Your focus becomes more narrow on what's wrong. It gets more complicated because Thinking about what's wrong without actually solving the problem and dealing with it builds up tension. Okay? This is something I've tested myself. I hooked myself up to equipment that, uh, that measured muscle tension and I was in a lazy boy chair so I laid back and relaxed and there was a little needle on a dial that, that measured the tension, tension so I did some diaphragmatic breathing and I got the needle to lay down so there was no measurable tension and I just thought to myself, well I think I'll get up and the needle, needle jumped just from that. Okay, got it back down again. Then I started thinking about something stressful. Didn't move a muscle and it jumped way up and it took longer to bring it back down. Okay? So you create this self-escalating process. Okay? Tension builds up. The mind focuses no more narrowly on what's wrong, which increases the tension, which focuses your mind more narrowly on what's wrong, which increases the tension further and it just keeps on escalating until something goes wrong. And, or you take care of it. So we're going to talk about how to take care of it. Okay? I want to explain a little bit about how memories are formed in the brain and how our thinking process works because we're understanding more and more about this and some recent research has just confirmed the validity of, of a lot of these ideas. Um, our brain actually works in a series of, they're almost like roadways, okay? They're, they're actually uh, biochemical connections between individual nerve cells and there's billions of them in your brain and they all have all kinds of different ways that they can connect. But essentially when we form a memory, it's a specific pathway between a specific set of neurons and this is something that they've confirmed. Uh, so when you uh, see my face at the beginning of this video, that forms a memory. And if you stay through the whole video, uh, the memory becomes reinforced. So if you happen to see me uh, that afternoon or later the next day or something like that, you might recognize me. Whereas if you had just passed me in the grocery store, uh, you wouldn't recognize me at all because the, there was just a brief connection. But this repeated connection of watching the video reinforces that 
that uh, link between the neurons, and that's how memory forms. And every time that you would see my face, you go back to exactly the same place in your brain. Okay, so my face is stored somewhere in your brain, and it gets reinforced every time you look at me. Okay, so imagine your brain is like an empty field. Okay, you walk across the field, you can kind of see where you walked. Okay, you've got the beginnings of a path. If you walk back, walk back the same way, the path starts to, to deepen a little bit. So if every day you spend a lot of time going back and forth on this path, uh, pretty soon it becomes automatic. Okay, you get to the field and you're simply going to take that path without even thinking about it. Okay, it's like when you drive home. Uh, uh, you don't think about how to get home. You don't count the stoplights or look at the street signs. If you've lived there for any length of time, you can think about what you're going to have for dinner or what happened today or whatever and still make it home without having to, to consciously pay attention to it. That's how habits form in our brain. The problem is, is the negative thinking and the worrying and the stressing can create habits in the brain that then work against us because they build tension. So in terms of our field, Think of it as, uh, let's say the path has a bunch of mud and poison ivy all over it, okay? But every time I go to the field, that's just where I go, so I'm itchy and dirty all the time, and I don't like it, okay? Which is this kind of equivalent of what happens to us when stress builds up. Uh, so what can we do about it? Well, first of all, we look at the whole field, okay? And let's find a place that we like, and let's find a place that we can get across very quickly, okay? So let's say I can get across this part of the field in 10 seconds or less. Okay, and let's make it a nice place. Uh, maybe it's got wildflowers, nice view, or something like that. So I'm going to take this new path, and I'm going to go across this thousand times a day, maybe even more. Okay, because uh, I can get across it in ten seconds, so I can do that a lot. Whenever my mind is free, whenever I'm not thinking about something, I'll go across on this this new path. Okay, within about a week, ten days or so, I have two paths. Okay, I've got mud and poison ivy. I got wildflowers, nice view. Okay, which one am I going to choose? I'm going to choose this one, okay? Uh, and so what happens to the old path if I don't walk on it anymore? Over time, it just gradually grows over and eventually disappears. And that's what happens to, to memories if they're not reinforced or connected uh, with some level of emotion or importance, okay? So uh, if you watch this video and see me 10 years from now, you wouldn't recognize me. I mean, I might be a little older than two, but still, even if I look the same, you probably wouldn't recognize me unless there was some repeated contact or some uh, emotional connection that, that created that. So the way we can create this new path in our mind, I refer to in the text as thought focusing, uh, but I call it a rhythm phrase. And what you do is you find a phrase and spend some time finding one that suits you well. Okay, something that makes you feel good, that brings a smile to your face, maybe makes you feel calm and relaxed. And whenever your mind is free, you simply repeat this phrase back and forth, back and forth. You repeat it over and over and over again. Uh, you repeat it in rhythm with your activities. So they're designed to be repeated in rhythm with your breathing. Uh, if you're doing some kind of physical work, let's say you're lifting weights, okay, you say the first part is you do one and the second part. Okay, so one of my clients uh, came up with a phrase for an example. Uh, it was a 16-year-old girl, and it was moon and stars, peace and calm. Okay, so you're exercising as you, you say, moon and stars, peace and calm. Moon and stars, peace and calm. Of course, doing this silently in your mind, okay? So as you repeat it over and over again, every time you say it, you're strengthening that path, okay? And if you find yourself on the old path, the one that creates all of the tension, you can jump right back to the initial path. Okay? So it, it stops building up the mental tension right away. It breaks up that pattern and it creates a new place in your mind where you can go at any time to stop the buildup of tension that brings a sense of, of peace and calm to you. Okay? So that's called thought focusing and it's the use of a, of a rhythm phrase. Uh, the other thing that you can do is to, and actually this works well in combination with the rhythm phrase, is to label roads that don't work. Um, I frequently have couples do this because uh, it seems like things can escalate into anger pretty quickly. Uh, and anger never works to resolve problems. Okay, I've never seen it ever happen where arguing really resolves the problem uh, over the long term without some unfortunate side effects. Okay, so uh, as soon as they start to get angry, 
uh, I suggest that they create a little signpost in their brain. So if you think of your mind as a road, uh, there's lots of roads that create problems in our mind. You know, okay, roads where we're blaming or resentful or guilty or angry uh, about things. And so you put a sign on that road by making a mental note. Every time you have that sense that you're going in that direction with your thoughts, you use the label. And it could simply be dead end, doesn't work, uh, uh, that uh, not helpful. Okay, and I think of it as as a as a road, and it's usually downhill and paved, very easy way to go, uh, and leads you to a swamp. And that kind of thinking uh, produces nothing helpful. Okay, so for example, uh, being resentful or someone, it just it just builds up tension, uh, narrows your focus, interferes with solving the problem, uh, tends to make them defensive, uh, does nothing useful. Okay, so when those thoughts kinds of thoughts come up, what you can do is create a label, nothing useful there. Okay, and when you start to head down that road, say the label each time, and then jump to your rhythm phrase. Okay. The more often you repeat that, okay, you're creating another series of connections in your brain. So you're actually creating like a, a new road, okay? And you don't go down that old road anymore. So resentment gradually fades out of your way of thinking and your life will improve as a result. So that's, in a nutshell, what happens to your mind under stress and a couple of things that you can do about it, okay? Good luck, enjoy.